All right. It's my privilege today <clears throat> to introduce uh, the two speakers, Bill Morris and Ian Joslin, uh, who will be talking about the in impact of implementing a contactless smart card system on Miami-Dade Transit and its customers. Bill is a senior research associate here at the Center for Urban Transportation Research. He specializes in providing technical assistance to transit systems with a focus on transit feasibility studies, marketing studies, and transit development plans. He also offers extensive expertise in community outreach, paratransit, and Americans with Disabilities Act planning, as well as transit and MPO planning process, experience with fair policy, public involvement, and long-term strategic planning having served as a strategic planning project manager for the Central Florida Regional Transportation Authority and a transit planner for the Hillsborough Area Tra Regional Transit Authority. And is a senior research associate also here in the Transit Management and Innovation Program at Cutter. She has over 20 years experience in the field of public transportation, including management positions at the Central Florida Regional Transportation Authority and marketing and outreach responsibilities for its statewide commuter assistance program. Her areas of expertise also include transit planning and operations with an emphasis on service planning, community outreach, strategic planning, and a project management. She's planned and implemented several specialized transit circulator services services, a roadside motorist assistance program, and a regional commuter assistance van pool program. So with that, let me turn it over to Bill and Ann. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I I'm going to start this presentation off um, by um, just giving you an overview of, of this project that we conducted uh, called the impact of implementing a contactless smart card system on Miami-Dade Transit and its customers. The um, project uh, was sponsored by the National Center for Transit Research housed here at Cutter with funding provided by the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, <clears throat> The Florida Department of Transportation was interested in, in having this, uh, this uh, effort conducted. Um, there is uh, the legislation here in Florida um, is, is uh, focused on um, facilitating and encouraging the uh, implementation of fair collection systems that are interoperable and compatible with multiple public transportation systems throughout the state. So FDOT was interested in finding out uh, exactly what the, the impacts were on uh, customers and uh, for use by others who might be interested or ex in exploring um, automated fare collection systems. And I also wanted to give a shout out to the staff at uh, Miami-Dade Transit. They did just a terrific job of collecting and organizing the data we needed um, to, to conduct this research. So when we set out uh, on this journey, what we uh, had hoped to do was identify the fair policy choices that are made uh, in conjunction with deployment, um, what changes might have been uh, implemented over the prior uh, fair policies and fair media. Um, we also wanted to look at how the cards and uh, are, are distributed um, via sales outlets or the internet, um, where other places where they may be sold and the degree to which they're available throughout the community. We also uh, wanted to find out what their collection system might have on the uh, institution to uh, either we're currently um, distributing uh, or purchasing and distributing uh, Miami-Dade Transit fares and also to learn with the new fair media, would, would other institutions be more likely to uh, participate in, in the fair program? Obviously, we wanted to analyze the fair policy and pricing, uh, examine sales, revenue, and consumption. Uh, what are the trends? Uh, and then finally, summarize the lessons learned for, for others. More specifically, uh, we wanted to find out what, what types of customers were switching from traditional fare to the easy cards? Again, what is the growth rate of easy cards? Did they continue to uh, increase in sales uh, or has, have sales stabilized? We also wanted to find out 
the cards were more likely to be used on certain modes than others, uh, and uh, what types of customers the uh, easy cards would be uh, most appealing to. And then finally, what was um, what people refer to as the take-up rate? Are people still m leaning more towards using cash to pay fares, or did they view the easy cards as a preferred option? So for those of you who are um, from outside the state or even outside the country, I'll uh, tell you just a little bit about Miami-Dade Transit. Um, they operate four major modes, Metro Bus, uh, fixed route service, uh, Metro Rail, which is a, an elevated uh, heavy rail system, uh, Metro Mover, which is a free elevated people mover, as well as uh, paratransit services they call specialized, trans or excuse me, special transportation services at Miami-Dade Transit. Um, at the time um, we conducted this study, I think they were the 16th largest system in the um, and then in 2012, uh, they provided over 107 million trips. So you can kind of see the magnitude of uh, what it would take to uh, implement a new uh, fare collection system. The reasons they did it, um, obviously uh, they had a very, very old system. To kind of put it in perspective, their uh, uh, fare collection system was uh, uh, put in place around the time Miami Vice was a popular TV show. Some of you may remember that, and some of you may not. So they needed something that was much more reliable. They also uh, had hoped to um, design a system that facilitates, uh, would facilitate seamless travel uh, within their own system between modes, as well as um, to accommodate other systems in the area, uh, <clears throat> primarily uh, Palm Tran and Palm Beach County, Broward County Transit, Broward County, and then Tri-Rail. And actually, uh, about a year after they implemented the system, Tri-Rail did as well and introduced a uh, monthly pass. So they did achieve this um, interagency interoperability. Uh, of course, they wanted to streamline their fare policies and media. They hoped to enhance bus boarding uh, speeds and also reduce fare evasion and cash handling. Um, and then finally, the data that they collected, they wanted to use to um, enhance their planning efforts. So the, the um, fare collection system actually involves two types of fare media. The easy card, uh, which is shown on the left here, is a plastic card with a microchip. It has a useful life of approximately three years. It recognizes all the various fare classes and fare categories. Um, it can be loaded with up to $150 in stored value. Now, the stored value uh, can be used in any number of ways. You might use stored value to pay for your parking adjacent to a metro rail station. Um, or if, for example, you primarily use um, metro bus services but knew on occasion that you might want to use metro rail, you could add uh, metro rail fares to it. It has um, auto, load re auto reload capabilities, so if um, you have a, a credit card on file, you can uh, schedule it to be automatically replenished. And then finally, it offers uh, balance protection if you register your card. So in the event of a lost or stolen card, you can transfer the uh, remaining balance to a new card. On the right-hand side is the uh, easy ticket. Um, it functions much like um, the Easy Card, but it doesn't have as quite as many features. Um, it's, it's a paper card uh, with a microchip. Um, it's designed to last about a month. Um, you can store one, in, excuse me, one in seven day passes on it. Uh, other affairs that uh, you can with the Easy Card, and again, it has um, auto reload capability. Excuse me, uh, cash value uh, you can load for uh, up to forty dollars. This ticket is, is designed primarily to people that may not be uh, frequent users, as well as um, visitors to the area. Now, on this slide, we're displaying some of the, the fair collection um, system components that are most visible to the customers. Obviously, there is a lot of computer systems and uh, computerization that goes on behind the scenes. Um, but uh, this is what uh, the, the customer is most likely to encounter. On the bottom left-hand um, uh, corner, you'll see the uh, ticket vending machines. These are um, located uh, uh, throughout the system. They have full capabilities to actually purchase um, easy cards, reload easy cards, 
checking balances, um, and again, uh, loading parking um, value. Um, to the immediate right, uh, or I guess it should be in the middle, is what's called a, a retail point of sale. It's the one that looks a little bit like a cell phone there. Um, this is what is used by uh, retailers out in the community um, to sell and uh, uh, conduct sales transactions. Um, the top right corner is a picture of a, a fare box that accepts easy cards, and then directly below that, a uh, fare gate. And then finally in the middle uh, on the bottom is um, a uh, ticket office machine. These are staffed by MDT uh, employees, um, and they conduct sales activities here. So the easy card system rollout, um, prior to the introduction of uh, easy card, uh, Miami-Dade uh, conducting a very, very extensive outreach campaign, which involved uh, advertisements on buses, trains, uh, various stations. And then due to the diversity of, of the county, um, they focused on producing all the outreach materials in English, Spanish, and Creole. Additionally, they uh, placed mock vending machines at stations and terminals to give an idea or to give people an idea of what was coming and uh, explain how, how the uh, vending machines worked. Um, they did television and radio and then uh, distributed approximately 500,000 free cards to, uh, to, uh, throughout the community. One of the um, things they done uh, that they did, um, which uh, they said was the reason for their successful rollout, is that they um, provide heavy staffing um, at the various um, stations uh, throughout the system. Uh, they had people available 24/7 throughout, uh, well, for about 16 weeks following implementation. So they really threw pretty much everything they had at it, and uh, they, they claim that it was uh, one of the reasons for their successful rollout. So that's kind of an overview of uh, why they did it and, and what they did in preparation for the easy card system. And at this point, I think I'll turn it over to uh, Bill Morris, and he's going to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, what we found, the reports, uh, the findings from our report, and some of the conclusions. Thank you, Ann, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is uh, Bill Morris. Um, <clears throat> we were wanted to uh, highlight some of the fair policy uh, changes and initiatives that uh, came about as a way of kind of explaining um, what you're going to see um, in the slides to come. So uh, first and foremost, for Metro Rail customers, um, the, the, there was a policy that required all Metro Rail customers to switch to Easy Card and Easy Ticket. Previously, they had tokens, and they did accept tokens for a period of time, but they did, and then they stopped selling them um, so that everyone would, uh, would be converted over to the Easy Card program. Um, Metro bus customers can transfer for free from bus to bus if uh, using an easy card or an easy ticket. Now, interestingly enough, <clears throat> this was a brilliant move, and it would have been brilliant if it had been for, uh, for fair policy reasons. But we had to dig really deep into some agenda items at Miami-Dade, and, and actually what happened was right around the time that the easy card program was rolled out, the staff was having to take a proposal to reduce service uh, to the board, and one of the things they realized was that they were going to create more transfers. And so they then recommended to the board going ahead and making transfers free um, if uh, the customer is paying by easy card, but then a cash customer would have to pay uh, $2 every time they board a bus. So, so transfers were essentially eliminated altogether. And then there are some fare free categories, um, golden passport uh, for seniors, uh, patriot passport for uh, anyone who has served in the military and is honorably discharged, and then the annual social security benefit. Um, to, in order to participate in those three programs, uh, Miami-Dade required individuals uh, to uh, acquire easy tickets um, and easy cards and easy tickets uh, for boarding. So. We're, uh, you know, previous research on this study um, had a lot to do with the institutional barriers. It had a lot to do with revenue sharing, interoperability uh, towards uh, between systems, you know, all of those kind of um, uh, big issues. And in trying to assess uh, what the 
impacts were on um, on customers uh, in uh, the Miami-Dade system. We're going to start by looking at sales and transactions. This is a, a good measure of how well uh, the program was received, whether it was able to maintain its popularity over time. Uh, were there, you know, a tremendous number of sales in the first year, and then it tanked, you know, in the years to come. Um, so this is uh, just a, a very good um, indicator of how the program was doing. So we're going to be talking about ticket vending machine sales and transactions, uh, ticket office machines, sales via the Internet, um, and ticket outlets. So TVMs are by far and away um, the most popular and the most utilized in the system. Uh, they had about $85 million in sales over a three-year period. Um, there are 62 full-service uh, TVMs, ticket vending machines, and 34 cashless. So that just means they only take uh, debit and credit card cards. They're located at all 23 metro rail stations and, and three other actually government, uh, Miami-Dade government locations uh, throughout the county. And so this shows uh, the progression um, between 2010 and 2012. The, these are the years for which Miami-Dade was able to uh, give us uh, data on sales. So uh, 24.5 million sold um, through TVMs in uh, 2010, and that increased to, uh, by 17.1% to 28.7 million in 2011, and then it increased again by 10% uh, to 31.4 million in uh, 2012. Um, and these are uh, basically the transactions um, that we're talking about. So uh, you can see that there um, there was some pretty strong growth in the easy tickets, um, which are in orange in the background, and then as well a, um, a steady growth of easy cards uh, over the uh, over the three year period through the uh, transit uh, to ticket vending machines. And then by form of payment, um, uh, it, obviously the, um, the the credit and debit card uh, use for payment was um, steadily increasing in orange in the foreground, uh, from five million in 2010 up to 7.8 million. But the clear preference uh, for transactions was cash, um, beginning at 19 million in 2010, and uh, rising to 23.5 million in 2012. For ticket office machines, um, there there are actually four, um, but uh, the the primary tic the ticket office machine is at Government Center. A uh, Government Center is pretty much where Metro Mover, Metro Rail, Metro Bus um, all come together. It's uh, it's been there a long time. Com customers are very comfortable with Government Center, um, and they also accept cash, credit, and debit cards as well as checks. So. Um, <clears throat> these are the um, transactions uh, that incurred uh, between 2010. So we actually saw a decline, a slight decline in easy card transactions from 120,000 in 2010 down to 99,000 in 2012. And there was actually a decline in um, easy ticket use between uh, 2010 and 11 uh, with, a, with an increase in 2012 to 58,000. So. <clears throat> And then by uh, by method of payment, um, we uh, what what actually was experienced to hear is um, there was much larger growth at the ticket office machines for credit and debit cards uh, in blue in the foreground, beginning at about 560,000 in 2010 and increasing to one and a half million in uh, 2012. And then um, cash transactions um, reduced um, from 3.2 million in 2010 to about half of that in 2011-2012. Uh, so um, the, the biggest um, decline overall was in the use of checks, um, which declined to 906,000 in 2012. All right, point of sale unit. Um, this may have uh, been one of the most uh, critical elements of the success of the program overall. Um, is Miami-Dade was able to negotiate with 86 retail outlets um, throughout the service area to sell easy card and easy tickets. They are very well geographically distributed um, throughout the area. And each um, retailer is equipped with one of these point of sale units that uh, Ann showed you earlier. Um, and in this case, uh, only data on sales were available. We actually do not have any data on transactions, so we don't have any idea what was what was sold at the, those points of sale, but just uh, the amounts. 
So for the three-year period, um, just to let you know what happened in 2012 was uh, Miami-Dade was only able to give us their sales data through July, and they could not give us August and September. So we, we ended up slicing August and September off of all three years so that we could show you the real growth rate. So essentially, those retail outlets started out at about 8.2 million in 2010 and had increased to uh, 9.7 million. And again, that's a 10-month um, sales figure uh, by the uh, by 2012. Sales via the internet internet are um, very modest, um, and that is really because there's just five products that are available um, on the internet. There is stored value, there is a monthly pass, the monthly unlimited pass, the monthly pass plus parking, excuse me, the um, one day pass and the seven day pass. So it's a, it's a pretty simple availability of uh, products um, as of this point. Um, stored value, I've had people ask me, you know, what does it mean? It's, you know, really no different than having a, a gift card to Outback. You know, if it's $50, you start out with $50 of stored value until you exhaust that value. So so sales were modest um, over uh, the three-year period. And um, as we can see, the most by, by 2012, the most popular transactions uh, for um, web-based sales were stored value, which are orange in the background, uh, increasing from 235000 in 2010 to 659000 and then as well, um, there was some growth with uh, monthly Metro Pass and some uh, growth with uh, the seven-day pass over um, the uh, three-year period. So now we look at basically these are, these are the total cumulative sales um, for all outlets and programs, and I'd like to give the caveat that we studied in this study. So in other words, there is, uh, there is a possibility that there could be other um, forms of sales that we might not have known about. But just as an order of magnitude, um, 85 million at the ticket vending machines, um, 31.6 million at all of the various retail outlets throughout the area, uh, a little over 13 million at the ticket office machines. Internet sales came in at 2.3 million. And then the corporate discount program, which we're going to talk about, came in at 2.3 million, and the colleges and universities were at 1.1. Okay, so the corporate discount program um, was one of those, you know, when you when you look at fair policy and and you look at what you're going to what you're doing before and what you're going to do after, sometimes you have to be a little flexible. And, uh, and you know, realize that you'll have to to adjust and be flexible after implementation. So the corporate discount program <coughs> allows participants and companies um, to save on commuting, co commuting costs through group discounts and pre tax savings. Um, this, the corporate discount program provides a one-month um, unlimited pass uh, on EasyCard uh, that is good for a month of unlimited rides on Metro Bus and Metro Rail. And then um, the... Uh, the regular price is $100, but then based on the number of employees, you can either get a 10 or a 15% um, uh, uh, de decrease in uh, the total price. Discount, sorry, that was what I was looking for. Um, employers have um, expressed interest in participating in the program when the CDP offers a web-based application. And essentially what that means is that um, instead of having to coordinate with someone at Miami-Dade Transit every month for attrition or new employees coming into a, 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 the company, um, employers wanted to be able to go in and manage those, those functions themselves so that they didn't have former employees getting a pass, you know, et cetera. And we, uh, we don't know as of this point whether or not Miami-Dade has been able to um, uh, accommodate those requests. So essentially, there was modest growth in participating employers, um, starting out with 179 in 2010 and increasing to 185 uh, by 2012. Um, and then uh, sales uh, were actually relatively steady. Um, I still can't figure out why that 2012 graph is so low, but uh, essentially around 780,000 a year um, for uh, the three-year uh, period for all in participating employers. And then for uh, colleges and universities, um, in the, this program is run a little differently. Um, in 2010, 
<clears throat> there were 30 institutions participating, and then by uh, 2012, there were 42, which was a 40% increase over uh, 2010. Now, this one is, um, this program is run using a monthly easy ticket uh, that is distributed to the institutions who then sell to the students. So, therefore, the monthly um, cost would be $100, but to the colleges and universities, the, the monthly easy ticket is sold for $50. And then FIU and Miami-Dade College, um, who are some of the biggest consumers of the programs, um, actually do have dedicated websites uh, promoting the program. And ridership data was not definitively available. And I'll just tell you, there is a fair category that's called monthly ticket, which by definition would be a monthly pass on an easy ticket. But it may also be possible that monthly tickets are available to the general public at the full price. So we think the writer, most of the ridership was from this program, but it wasn't definitive. So um, here were the uh, basically a jump um, for participating institutions from 30 to 42 in 2011 and stayed steady in uh, 2012. Um, and the sales uh, did increase over the period, starting with about 375,000 in 2010 up to uh, 411,000 in 2012. Um, so basically, the incentives for the colleges and universities included the flexibility of purchasing the easy tickets for $50, uh, the dedicated website, and then employers benefit by having the monthly pass automatically loaded on um, their participants' cards. So now I'm going to move into um, the ridership impacts um, for both Metro Rail and Metro Bus, and I, I will mention that um, Miami Day Transit has recently implemented a, 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 a version of the smart card uh, system for their special transportation services, their paratransit services, um, but that was not um, something that we studied as part of uh, this study. We only studied Metro Rail and Metro Bus. So as I mentioned, by policy, um, all fares uh, on Metro Rail were required to be paid for with easy card and easy ticket. Uh, Metro Rail did have year-over-year -year increases in ridership, but that could not specifically be attributed to the implementation of EasyCard, and that has a lot to do that with, in 2008, 2009, there were also declines in ridership that were roughly reflective of what was going on in the economy at the time. However, there is a contrast with Metro Rail um, that is uh, different from Metro Bus. Uh, of the 51 million passenger trips taken over the three years, 16.8 um, million or 33% were paid with easy ticket and 33.9 million or 67% with easy card. So it's um, a 67 to 33 breakdown. And then the other thing on Metro Rail is between 2011 and 2012, um, easy ticket passenger trips actually uh, increased while easy card passenger trips declined. The most common fare category is uh, stored value full fare um, with the monthly corporate discount program, the second most uh, popular fare category. And then the fare categories for stored value elderly and annual SSB remain steady at about 2.2 million annual passenger trips. On uh, Metrobus, um, Miami-Dade was able to achieve 69% of all trips paid by Easy Card and Easy Ticket. Um, the, there was a modest increase in, in uh, uh, ridership between 2011 and 2012, and then corporate discount program ridership from what we could gain, gain from the ridership data grew by 19% between 2011 and 2012. So moving into um, the synthesis and conclusions, um, the, the first one that we think is the most significant is that this fair collection system has been widely accepted with three of every four trips on Metro Bus and Metro Rail paid by Easy Card and Easy Ticket. I would really love to be able to tell you all from a research perspective that this is really a staggering result. Unfortunately, we did not go out and look at 10 other systems who had implemented a program, and we did not see where they were by the end of year three, such that we don't have anything um, to compare this to. But I think what I, we can say from a research perspective is that this is a total testament to just how committed Miami-Dade Transit was into making this program when you look at all of the, the various cultures and languages um, spoken within Miami-Dade County. 
Um, easy cars have a much greater prevalence of use <clears throat> than uh, easy tickets. However, easy ticket uh, ridership has grown on Metro Rail. Um, Metro bus passengers use easy card by a four to one margin over easy ticket. So that was the contrast. 33% um, use easy ticket on Metro Rail, 67% uh, um, on Metro Rail are easy card, whereas 80% of bus passengers are using easy card only. Um, and again, the ridership increase, increases and or declines could not be attributed specifically to the implementation of the AFCF. Um, incentives, um, I think we've kind of talked about uh, most, of, most of these, but this was something that um, um, FDOT was very interested in understanding how incentives might um, stimulate the, con the consumption. And then um, after the program was fully implemented, there was a monthly regional pass that is a universal pass um, between Tri-Rail and Miami-Dade. So anyone who holds that regional pass can ride any mode, um, any service at any time. And then as mentioned, um, easy cards are now issued to every customer of uh, special transportation services, the paratransit service, um, as, a, as a way of paying their co-pays uh, whenever they take their rides. So here is um, our, uh, our slide um, essentially showing in the foreground in uh, the blue, this is the total easy card, um, easy ticket ridership on Metro bus, cumulative on Metro bus and Metro rail in 2011 and 2012. And the background in orange is the total ridership, 93.3 and 96.5. And then uh, this is what's showing that 74.9% of all trips were paid for with Easy Card, Easy Ticket, uh, 2012, 73.3%. So um, this is uh, a very significant result uh, for the study. And I do believe, ah, lessons learned, that's correct. Um, essentially, we had a chance to sit down with uh, the staff at Miami Day Transit to um, you know kind of get a get a sense of the context of what their lessons learned in in terms of the implementation of the program. And this first one that says don't rush, um, create a reasonable implementation schedule. The the context behind that was there was a huge um, rush for procurement of hardware and software and a huge rush to get it out um, into the service area and get people using it. And so that they um, hadn't thought through necessarily all of the things that would happen once that once they were able to get it all out there. Um, carefully evaluate fair policy and structure, um, and incorporate desired changes before introducing um, the automated fair collection system. Um, I will I would say about that you can evaluate it you know as carefully as you want, but it's, you're still going to have to be flexible. Um, Create a thorough and well-designed card distribution plan with um, special needs, uh, special attention to the needs of corporate customers. And then in this last bullet, when it says engage representatives from all fu functional areas, this is talking about the transit agency itself internally to its own um, organization to plan and deploy. And thoroughly document your business practices um, for each department to make post-implementation smoother and more efficient. So, so what this is um, essentially saying is um, if you do not document your business practices before implementation, you can rest assured that after implementation you will be doing that because you then have to adjust um, to all of the various functional uh, things that have to take place um, once you have such a system in place. Um, clearly anticipate the need for additional financial and accounting staff. Um, uh, create a business processing system closely aligned with the information technology function. And Miami Data indicated on, on this one that what, what happened was um, they, they had, you know, clearly some core reports uh, from the vendor of the system they bought, but their IT function was able to open up a lot more doors for them and, and help them to customize the system um, to be able to get different kinds of reports as needed. Predefining the reporting requirements and data needs um, by a functional area, but again, be flexible for uh, future reporting needs. Um, and then anticipate significant benefits in terms of uh, functionality, control, ridership, revenue, reporting, and data re reliability. In fact, Miami-Dade uh, Transit staff told us that it was the implementation of the system itself 
that w enabled them to give us the level of data that they were able to provide. So that's the, so the, those 2010 through 2012 um, figures that you see are all post implementation, and all of that data came from the system um, that they actually procured. So with that, I will wrap up um, our part of uh, the present presentation. Um, uh, on this slide, you can obviously see uh, Anna and my email address if you would like any follow-up communications with us. So, Phil, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Th thank you, Bill. And thank you, Ann. Um, as you recall, <coughs> I think Stephanie said in the beginning, if you go up at the top upper left-hand corner, you hit Q&A, you'll be able to um, ask yeah, you'll be able to submit your questions, and then I'll draw from this list to ask. So uh, the first question we have is, how many riders does the corporate component represent? Um, between uh, Metrobus and Metrorail, I believe it is about 3 million passenger trips. I think it's about 2 million passenger trips on uh, Metrorail and about a little over a million on, on uh, Metrobus. <clears throat> the uh, next question is, do you know what the total cost of implementing the system was, and has there been any sort of cost-benefit analysis such that other agencies might know what they might expect? I, Bill, um, yes. the, the, the initial cost, uh, at least in terms of their contract with the vendor, was approximately $42 million, and that, that was the cost of actually um, designing the system, um, furnishing all the equipment, uh, doing the installation, and then a lot of the um, in-house training. Uh, I don't know what the actual uh, costs were in terms of MDT's internal expenses for things like the outreach program and advertising and that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm not aware of a cost-benefit analysis that's been conducted. All right. Thank you, Ann. Our next question is, what was the implementation timeline and or duration of the solicitation planning and, depl and deployment? I, um, well, I can tell you that um, they, they began system, I think, about five years before they rolled it out. Uh, and I believe, um, I'm trying to remember how many months it actually took them when they started doing the installation, uh, although the, the vendor said it was the fastest one they'd ever done. Uh, prior to that, I think that the fastest one was 18 months. So this was something less than that. I think I want to say it was like 9 to 12 months. Yeah, it could be. From procurement to actually having the functional machines working. <clears throat> And I, I'm not certain how and long the, the, actual, the, the actual procurement process uh, took. Okay. The, kind of, a, I guess, a related question was, was this a single award or several awards? And who, who was it awarded to? Um, the contract was awarded to Cubic. Uh, there may have been some other subcontracts that I'm not aware To me, like, uh, pretty much Cubic was, it was a turnkey system. Okay. And have you received any information on the type of passengers purchasing the media? You know, for example, tourists versus locals. Uh, no, uh, not that I'm aware of. One of the things uh, to note here, um, Phil, was that one um, concern uh, about the, this type of a program was uh, privacy. And so the legislature uh, did actually enact a statute 341.031, and it basically says the travel destinations of customers are not a matter of public record. Um, so there, there is not a lot that can be gleaned, uh, unless it's part of a criminal investigation, about travel behavior, travel patterns, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any thought of using the cards to say for, say for paying for airport parking charges or other transportation-related fees? That is probably a, a long-term goal. Um, it's, it's not anything that came up um, in the course of our study. 
And uh, do you know of any incentives that were provided to card sales outlets to get them to participate? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question, and I, I do not know the answer to that question, um, whether they are – uh, receiving a certain amount uh, per transaction, you know, for the for for the sales that they make, I, I I don't actually know the answer to that question, Phil. Okay, um, I think you you noticed earlier that the corporate discount program grew by 19 percent, but I believe you had another slide that showed the number of sites seem largely unchanged over time. Um, the number of, yeah, the number of companies participating. Companies, yeah. It, any thought about why it grew so much, even though the number of sites probably was relatively unchanged? Well, I mean, it, you know, again, the, um, let me just tell you that what I do know about that. Um, in the first year, they tried using a <clears throat> seven day weekly unlimited pass. Um, for the corporate discount program, and then I guess they decided that that became too wieldy. Uh, so then that was when they came up with the idea of doing um, the monthly pass. But it could have also something to do with the fact that the the number of rides is unlimited, um, and uh, you know that that may have something to do with uh, the growth and the ridership. Okay. Was the equipment provided free of charge to the card sales outlets? We don't know. And if do you have any idea, going back to the, I guess, the corporate discount program, do you know how many employees participated at those companies versus not just total rides? Like, you know. And I'm not sure. Did, I don't believe they ever gave us data on on total participation, right? It was it was mostly sales and ridership, is what I recall. That's my recollection as well. Yeah. Uh, is the Miami is Miami Day considering the addition of smartphone technology for fair purchase payment for the system, and will pay by phone? Look to maybe uh, you know it's uh, it's, it's a it's a great question. Uh, Ann and I were actually talking about that. It, it wasn't a function of uh, this study, but it, um, it 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 definitely is a a testament to the fact that every time technology changes, five minutes later it changes again. You know, and so that's that's going to be something that everyone is going to have to be dealing with now, um, especially as the millennials just expect to pay for everything with their phone. You know, they they don't understand why they can't. So. And I, I do believe, I, I, as we, we talked about early on, ultimately the system is supposed to be interoperable with other agencies in the area. And I, I did read something recently to suggest that um, uh, Broward County Transit is, is looking at uh, smartphones and trying to evaluate how that might tie into the easy card system. Okay. Uh, is there any assessment, was there any assessment or have been relative to this program on customer satisfaction with Miami Day Transit. We're not aware of any any specific evaluation that was done, uh, other than just the anecdotal um, comment from staff. And I think that uh, they were just real pleased with um, with uh, what they perceived to be high levels of customer satisfaction. Uh, they, they didn't identify too much in the way of any issues they encountered during rollout, uh, with the exception of um, they had to do a little bit of uh, extra or pay a little bit of extra attention in terms of teaching people that they needed to both tap in and tap out of the system to have the fares and, and uh, properly recorded. Uh, so my answer on, on satisfaction, at least from what we can glean from this study, is look at look at how sales continue to increase. Um, virtually in every category of every type, um, there was, you know, there was a year over year increase and, and had this, the customer, uh, rejection or, or, or lack of satisfaction been there, I do believe, um, you would have seen those sales tank. Okay. And it looks like the last question we have for in the queue today, right now, is, is there any idea if, um, the neighboring transit agencies, Broward County Transit or, and or Palm Tran will, incorporate similar cars into their systems? 
Uh, well, as, as I mentioned, um, there, you know, this is being done incrementally, uh, both, uh, and, and of course, uh, Tri-Rail was the first one to um, sort of join in with Miami-Dade in terms of the, uh, the regional pass. Uh, as I mentioned, Broward County is, is uh, exploring opportunities to interface, uh, and they're, again, based on what I read, they're focused on smartphones. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Palm Tran is actually – uh, planning to do a, uh, a, a sort of a mini demonstration project on a, a single or a couple of routes. Okay. And actually, we have one more question come in. Uh, were there no initial software issues on the r rollout? They were aware of the Clipper card in San Francisco. Initially, many of the onboard readers there apparently didn't work well owing to programming bugs. Probably. Well, I was going to say the same word, probably. <laughs> I mean, not not anything that we uh, gained a lot of significant detail from the staff on. It, it was more, they, they told us that they were inundated with data, and within a few months their servers shut down because there was so much data um, that the servers couldn't handle it anymore. And so then they had to figure out a way to, to manage and archive data. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I do seem to recall that um, they did indicate some sort of problems related to moisture, but I think that was more specific to some of the garage equipment versus what the customer was actually seeing. Okay. Well, I, on behalf of uh, the, our audience, I'd like to thank you, Bill and Ann, for an excellent presentation today. Uh, if for those before you leave, if you take a few minutes just to complete the evaluation, that helps provide guidance to us in ways to improve going forward. And if you're in need of certification maintenance credits under the AICP program of the American Planning Association, if you complete this evaluation and provide your contact info at the end, we'll let you know when we've been approved to award a, a single credit for that. Uh, this Today's session has been recorded. It should be available for playback on our website www.cutr.usf.edu within 48 hours. And with that, we'd like to thank you all. Have a good day, and we hope to see you back in about two weeks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everyone.